have to work, there are situations that both people can't make ends meet. There, use your common sense. There's always these, these exceptions to the rule, but many times it's because we want the bigger cars and the fancier clothes and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If you really evaluate it and scale down like Robert and I said, don't, don't I want you at home, we moved from a big house to a small house. We didn't drive new cars, we drove old clunkers that he had his head under the hood half of the time at night trying to fix them so they'd work the next day. There was a couple we knew, he was a billionaire, he's a devotee, he had so much money. Big house, everything. All of a sudden, he was in the investment business for people, and I don't know, there was a downturn in the market. He lost all of his money, and he told his wife she had a, a Ph.D., I think. No, no, let me... Not MBA. She was a Harvard MBA. Harvard MBA. At the time when women, a Harvard MBA woman, could work any place in the world. He says, you go get a job. She says, I'm not getting a job. I got two kids. I'm staying home and raising my two children, and I'll live in a mobile home. I'll live in a trailer park. But I am not going to leave my children. Within about a year, the guy had made all of his money back. Paid off the government taxes. And everything. everything. Do you see what Swami does? Do you see if we're willing to sacrifice? Do you see what he does? It's the commitment to follow Swami's teachings. It is so important, and if we do, His grace just comes in. Now, to show you what else these people did, the girls were teenagers, and I see them in Buddha party. They said, Swami has given us everything. They went to one of the Russian countries to work there, to help that government do something in the financial things. And they were living in, you know, very difficult situations. And we see them at Buddha Party. They said, oh, we know it was a sacrifice. But we know this is really what Swami wanted us to do, to help someone else, because he helped us. I mean, these are the kind of values that devotees really can be created from Swami. It's sacrifice being selfless, and there are so many of you out there, just with all the wonderful work you're doing here. It's not easy though, is it? But it's so rewarding, so rewarding. Uh, this, you mentioned, Rita, that when a boy likes a girl, he should speak to his parents and find an opportunity to approach the girl with the parents. First of all, that didn't come from Rita. That's what Swami said to a group of young, single adults from New York City who Swami had in for an interview. And they were asking him, what do you do if you don't want us to date? And Swami said, if you feel something inside, you feel some kind of interest or attraction, then you go to that girl's parents and talk to the girl. And if the door is going to open, if this is the right one, it will open. You just can't imagine what Swami does. I mean, if it's to be, it will be. Uh, if this really possible in today's time and culture, well, Swami said so, it must be. It depends on your motive. It depends on your rational reasoning. If you're to meet someone and you keep yourself pure, that person will find you. The more neurotic you are, your neurosis meet and mesh. The purer you come, the higher your values, you will attract that type of energy. You see, you attract it. Now, what if it was the girl who likes the boy? Now, ladies, we have a problem. <laughs> Surely she cannot be taking the same approach. <laughs> I love it. Uh, you find an answer to that one, let me know. <laughs> right, Swami. We, we do, we, yeah, right, Swami. Right, Swami. We do have a lot of patience, don't we, huh? Oh, see, I'm not sure about all this words. Where's Brother Reddy? 
Come up here, man. Take a look at this. I can't okay. make this all. How up. do I know that I'm compatible with another person? Number one, you may have some common interest, which is Swami singing bhajans or doing things, but I can guarantee you, you won't be compatible because you marry opposites. Okay? You are going to rub your egos. That's what Swami says it's all about. And you know this in any relationship. You will have common interest, but don't look for, it's, you know, like she said, Disneyland, you know? You're going to have all these trials and tribulations and rubbing. That's growth. That's what it's really all about. Uh, this one, I had to have a little interpretation here because our language references is different. Do we stay together? If my spouse has a biting habit, he is a very nice guy, but when he lost his temper, he can bend. When the situation is really too hot, so you said that bent means stubborn, huh? Stubborn? If somebody has a biting habit, that's what, I mean, biting himself, biting a cigar, biting what, you know? Uh, just a biting habit, and I mean, Robert and I both got an ice cream biting habit, huh? It's got B-I-T-T-I-N-G. Uh, BT? Huh? Uh, okay. Swami said that is the only time. Yeah, I got Swami's quote in here. Yeah, about violence. You should not stay with the individual. Yeah. yeah. Swami's, Swami's got a quote that if you're in a violent situation, abusive, abusive situation, situation. Uh, Swami says that that is the time that. Uh, uh, you don't need to stay in that situation. That's that's the time that uh, you can leave, or you should leave, so that you're not not hurting yourself. I have to look for it. Now I have two epistles up here that somebody has written, and I haven't had a chance to read uh, all of them yet. So the two people that wrote these long letters on long paper, please come and talk to me privately after the session. Okay. All right? I think we're finished. I feel like we, we went through a test. Yeah. <laughs> Boy. We had a wonderful time. Oh, I gotta sing my song for you. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I was telling the guys during the break that there's this, this little song, and it's a cute one, and it's especially great for, for, for children. Oh. And since you all attended our marriage workshop, you're all children. Swami's children. This is, have you ever heard Old MacDonald had a farm? Yes. Okay. Old Sai Baba had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm he had a ram, E-I-E-I-O. With a Sai Ram here and a Sai Ram there. Here a ram, there a ram, everywhere a Sai Ram. Oh, Sai Baba had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on the farm he had a sheep, E-I-E-I-O, with a Baba here and a Baba there, here a Baba, there a Baba, everywhere a Sai Baba, old Sai Baba had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on the farm he had a lion, E-I-E-I-O, with a darshan lion here and a darshan lion there, here a darshan lion, there a darshan lion, old Sai Baba had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm he had a car, E-I-E-I-O. With an old car here and an old car there, here a car, there a car, everywhere an old car. Old